Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening on a Tuesday. Hey, baby, how's it going over there? Hey, good. How are you? Fabulous, fabulous. I always love Tuesdays because later in the program... get to talk to my dad. You and I sound so smart but in comparison to him, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's uh, he's a smart guy, and he always has fun facts, I think most of which he makes up on the spot. Probably. But we do have Tuesdays with Charlie coming your way later in the program. Also, carjackings and murders are so bad in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil... The city legislators voted to end enforcement of speed limits in areas where criminal routines, uh, criminals routinely attack motorists. They're saying, you know what? We need to hightail your butt out of there. You can take off. And what they're saying is this is an area where people are going slow and that's where they're having problems. They're saying, you know what? There is no speed limit. Speed through this area. Get out of here as fast as you can. The cops don't want to go there. They're not going to pick you up. Just speed through this part of town and get out of here. Huh. That. That might not be the good part of town I, I, I to live in. I think that seems counterproductive. I think that'll probably cause more problems than, I don't think so. than it, what they're trying to solve. Don't I like the think? idea of no speed limit. I, I think that sounds like a lot of fun. All right. Coming up, we're going to talk about sea slugs. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it is. And we're going to chat about it on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Have you ever heard of sea slugs before? I have not. I haven't either. But apparently the sea slug has no defenses of its own. So it borrows weapons from other creatures. For example, <laughs> it borrows yeah, weapons. It actually manages to swallow the jellyfish sting cells, oh. which then find their way to the sea slug's skin, where once the slug uses them uh, as if they were own their own sting cells. So a slug like a snail? I think so. The sea slug doesn't have its own defenses, so it eats the sting cells of a jellyfish to sting that's other people. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is a, a it's pretty pretty uh, inge- ingenious little sea slug. So there you go. I think that's kind of a neat thing. We need to learn from the sea slug. I wonder if that works for humans. Like, say, if you eat Superman, would you have X-ray vision? I don't think so. <laughs> You'd be a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> How would you eat Superman? You'd have to do it in one bite because you can't cut him up, right? I'm not exactly sure if that... If there's any reasoning to any of that, but uh, there you go. If you want to be a cool creature, be a sea slug. That is cool. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. Heidi, you know this is true because... You heard it on the radio. Exactly. Exactly. The church bells in Mezima, it's a village near La Spazia in northern Italy, were silenced earlier this month by the local parish priest. A tourist, it seems, had complained about the early morning gonging. Some residents, though, were not very happy. A dozen of them protested by banging pots and lids in the street. So they got their way. Uh, the, the city told them you got to quit banging that bell. So the, the residents were upset. So Good they for started them. They're banging. the ones that live there. If you're a tourist, yeah. you don't get to tell other people in that community how to how to do their thing. A That's dozen of them ridiculous. protested by banging pots and lids in the street. Uh, Anna Denaria, who led the protest, said early Wednesday of last week, uh, after a few pot banging protest sessions, the church started chiming in again. Good. They ring every morning at 7 a.m. and a few more times throughout the day. Uh, Daenerys says the sound of the bell keeps the elderly company, and it's a tradition that is centuries old in this village. Yep. So they're saying, hey, if you don't like the bells... Don't come here. Be a tourist somewhere else. Right. Why don't you boogie or tush up the street? you need to be here. So somebody that was visiting this northern Italy town didn't like all the bell banging. That drives me crazy. When, What's that? When people come somewhere that they don't belong and try telling them how to do... What you can and can't do. Uh, exactly. Like, just butt out go and leave home. me alone. If you don't like what we do here, go somewhere else. Yeah. So that was in uh, La Spazia in northern Italy. Uh, we lived in a community where they had a clock. It was called the Glockenspiel. Remember that? I do. I and, do. and it was a little clock that, that put on like a show every certain number of hours. And it amazed me how many people would go hang out downtown to watch that. So they knew that it was going to be at you know eleven, at one, at whatever, 
And every hour that they had that, there'd be a crowd of people in this little courtyard to watch it. Tourists. And, yeah, tourists. Not and, like the people that live there go there every day to, <laughs> hey, let's go. What are you doing? Well, turn off the TV quick. We've got to get up the street and watch the clock again. <laughs> no, I think once, you, once you've seen it, you've once seen you've it. Once you've seen it, yeah. But it was really a neat thing, and people did come they just did from, for from that. A long, from a long ways away. Well, apparently not everybody appreciates it because this guy in Italy was complaining. But you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. In Española, New Mexico, the police there say a man was arrested uh, for his 22nd drunk driving offense, Heidi. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's not good. His blood alcohol content tested five times higher than the legal limit in New Mexico. (sighs) They say an officer pulled up to a parked car along the highway, found a 51-year-old man laying on the ground near the vehicle. He had to be taken by ambulance to a hospital in Santa Fe where his blood, blood alcohol analysis showed... 0.399. Point three nine nine, and what's the point zero eight? Oh, <laughs> five times. He's like he wasn't limit. dead. Yes, he's been arrested five times in New Mexico. Has had at least sixteen others in other states. Uh, his records show that he's pending DUI charges in Angel Fire and Española. So two of these are like right now in in the works. He has been served with arrest warrants from San Miguel, Bernadillo, and San Deval counties. All on DUI or DWI charges. Why is he not in jail? Exactly. I mean, you guys are going, well, we're trying to serve you with papers. You already arrested him. Just yeah. keep him. Why would you let him out? Like, okay, now you make sure you Don't come back. Don't do it again. Make sure you come back next week. <laughs> so uh, apparently his brain is on drugs, but also the police that keep letting him go, theirs are too. So that's this unfortunate because you yeah. could kill somebody. And that's what's going to happen. And then there are going to be a lot of people upset. And all they had to do is, like, next time you arrest him for drunk driving, you know, this him. is his 22nd time, just keep him next time. All right? All right. This Make is sure your... he gets the help he needs, first exactly. of all, because he's clearly got But he needs the issues. help behind bars. That's where he needs to yeah. be. Yeah. All right. This is your brain on drugs. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. Now your moment of duh. Jenny Tonga is a member of Parliament in the United Kingdom. Of course, as a politician, she likes to feel important and quite often sends out press releases about places she's been and functions she's attended. It's too bad that wasn't enough for her. Recently, she issued a press release stating that it was an honor for her to meet the brave children at Shooting Stars Children's Hospice. She praised the doctors and nurses at Shooting Stars Children's Hospice, saying they were second to none during her visit. The only problem, she never visited the hospice. How do we know? Easy. Shooting Stars Children's Hospice hasn't even been built yet. Oh, my god! She wasn't even in the U.K. when she said she was supposedly there to visit. Oh, my god! So you got a lady who's saying, hey, look at me. Look what I've done. I'm so wonderful. I've been to all these wonderful places and done these wonderful things. Clearly you have not. (laughs) That is a moment of duh right there. That's yeah. actually pretty I'm, funny. It, Serves her right. Exactly. Coming up, we have your Scoop of the Day and Tuesdays with Charlie. Before you know it, right here on the John and Heidi Show. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Police in Melbourne, Florida, arrested a man that they said that he tried to rob churchgoers during a church sermon. The robber was tackled by the church pastor. That is exactly why you don't try to rob the Church of Rambo. <laughs> I don't know who that pastor is, but I'm like, hey, I like that guy. All right. According to a study, mothers treat cute babies nicer than they do homely babies. Now, that is such a subjective Did thing. Did they interview your mom? <laughs> I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Am I a cute one or am I a homely one? I'm wondering. I've got a lot of siblings. <laughs> who are you saying is who? I don't know who Le- Lena Dunham is, but she had to be rescued by pro surfer Laird Hamilton recently in the Hamptons. And this is from the New York Post. It says she was uh, out on a paddle boat and Laird swam out and dragged her back on course. 
Uh, later, Dunham posted, Laird Hamilton came to save me. He literally is King Triton. He appeared as if from the ocean's depths to guide me to the finish line. So she apparently is not good at, at the whole paddle boat thing. She drifted so far off course, they had to, they had to save her. That's if, pretty cool, though. If you're in a paddle boat, can't you paddle back on course? I don't know. So, yeah, he sa- saved her life, according to her. So, I don't I've know. I've never saved anybody. Nor have I. We need to start getting we in the should... saving business. Yeah. I have an idea. Later today, we'll go out. I'll try to push somebody out in front of traffic, and you stop them. You save them. And then later, you can do the same. So, then we're both saving people. I'm liking this plan. There you go. I'm so, liking this plan. Uh, maybe. we, we got to could... make sure we do it right, because <laughs> that could backfire horribly. <laughs> All right. Maybe we won't do that. <laughs> All right. Many people today are very familiar with stories from the Bible of miracles, but it's not just people in biblical times that believe in miracles. Uh, there are polls in the United States that say... Uh, about 80% of U.S. residents believe in miracles. One survey suggests that 73% of U.S. physicians believe in miracles. 55% claim to have personally witnessed treatment results that they had no other explanation for other than a miracle. Even more striking than the number of people who believe in miracles is the number of people who claim to have witnessed or experienced them. I've witnessed miracles. Have you? I have, and I believe in miracles. Absolutely. I definitely do. I have a sister who is alive today. There's no way at all that she should be it is a miracle that she's alive today. We've had miracles happen in our life. We so have many I times. definitely believe. After years of being told to drink water, researchers now say, hey, guess what? Maybe you shouldn't drink so much water. Are you kidding? <laughs> They're saying the water most of us drink is too acidic. So now we're supposed to drink some special kind of water and make sure it's alkaline water and make sure it's high pH, uh, natural or like no additives. You got to drink a special water now? Are you kidding me? Secret is going to start selling water. pH balance. <laughs> Strong enough pH for a man. pH balance for women. pH balance for a woman. <laughs> All right. Scientists at the National Institute of Mental Health discovered a way to turn lazy monkeys into workaholics. <laughs> lazy monkeys. <laughs> the rhesus monkeys had to push a lever in response to a visual cue to get a reward for a, a drop of water. After a while, they'd slack I off. I hope it was pH balance. Right? I hope so, too. But when given gene treatment that blocks the brain from receiving dopamine, the chemical associated with rewards, the monkeys worked hard harder and longer and made fewer mistakes. So I guess I'm not sure what that means, other than they're saying that lazy monkeys are now working harder. Why would that be? You wouldn't think getting rid of the dopamine... I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. I All guess right. that's probably why we're not scientists. <laughs> and and we're, we're not in charge of any lazy monkeys, thank goodness. <laughs> a new survey finds that nearly half of all Americans gain weight on the job. According to workers, it's hard to eat healthy and exercise when you're working hard. <laughs> when, you're, when you're sitting at a desk. <laughs> working hard. Not when you're working hard, when you're sitting at a freaking desk. <laughs> all right. And uh, just for those of you who wonder, I gain weight on the job. I also gain weight off the job. <laughs> I gain weight everywhere. Gaining right. weight is my job. There you go. Hey, a strange law now. In McDonald, Ohio, farmers cannot march a goose down a city street, Heidi. Okay. I'm not sure why. I don't know why they needed a law for that. Apparently, this was becoming a problem. So that's your strange law from McDonald, Ohio. And this has been your Scoop of the Day. Tuesdays with Charlie is on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Time now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone. We call my father-in-law for a little segment we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Well, you know, it's kind of a rough day after the holidays, but yeah, I we're know. okay. And, and today kind of feels like a Monday for a lot of people. It's Tuesday. So what kind of stuff are we going to learn about today, Charlie? Hey, you know who the Beastie Boys are? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, we know those guys. Apparently they have, uh, what do they call it, kind of haircut, a mullet? Okay. Is that what they call that? Sure. They might okay. have. I don't really remember, actually. Okay, well, uh, see, they coined the term mullet in their 1964 song, Mullet Head. 19. Beastie Boys, there's no way they were around in 64. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you've got some misinformation again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in 1984. Maybe it's 84, I can't read it. <laughs> well, anyway, there was no earlier use of the term mullet that refers to hairstyle has been found. So they, yeah. the Beastie Boys invented the mullet. They invented it. Or at least they named it. Whether it be 64, 84, 94. I'm, I'm guessing it was are. 84. 84? Had to be. Had to be? Had to be. 
I'm going to make a note check with my staff. <laughs> <laughs> Your staff. Heads are going to roll. <laughs> and mullets Nobody's are going to fly. Nobody's getting fired. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, there'll be heads rolling. Hey, be lenient. You know, yesterday was a holiday. Well, that's true. They could have, <laughs> they could have been a little blurry eyed you know. There you go. Hey, then uh, there's a man in Sweden who received disability benefits for his addiction to heavy metal music. Really? Ever. He went to 300 concerts in, concerts in one year. Oh, wow. Left him unable to hold down a job. Oh, good Lord. Well, that's a lot of... Con- that's almost every night. He only missed 65 nights. <laughs> I think uh, I think he's on to something here. I would... Uh, yeah, Dad, don't you have an addiction to golf? I mean, hey. you should really be getting disability benefits. There you that. go. Go golfing every day. That's what I'm thinking here. We're going to check into that. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, this is ridiculous. Hey, then Apple and Facebook have said they will cover the cost of freezing the eggs of female employees who want to delay having a baby while they pursue their careers. Well, that's cool. We'll do that here at the radio station, too. We'll put it in the uh, in the cafeteria freezer, though. So I don't know, that's, I don't know how that's going to... Let's go in the lunchroom. We'll just write it on Ziploc bags. Heidi's eggs. Your, your lunchroom would fit all my employees. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Hey, then did you know that 70% of Americans hate their jobs? 70%? I would assume the number is much higher than that. 70% would, hate their jobs? I love my job. Well, you're one of the few. <laughs> I'm in the 30%. I'm in the 70%. <laughs> you and I need to talk later. Somebody, calls you. somebody needs a raise. <laughs> it's the John and Somebody Else show starting tomorrow. Hey, then, did you know that uh, one out of every 21 New Yorkers is a millionaire? Wow, that's pretty cool. That's a lot of money. And they all live in a one-bedroom apartment because it's all they can afford. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey, then, I got one last hair thing for you. What's that? Valentine's Day. Yeah. Because of Valentine's Day, March is the biggest month for pregnancy tests and sales. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that because, yeah, you know, I'm sure. that one time a year that the, the hey, let's get together, uh, hubba, hubba, hubba. <sighs> Uh, it's not my birthday, but it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> there you go. Valentine's Day, you know, you get you get a little something-something. That's what I'm thinking. Exactly. You got anything for me? I do. I've got a question for you. Okay. This is kind of a fun one here, Charlie. How come I'm so handsome? Well, that... <laughs> yeah. Oh, D- dear Charlie, why are you so darn handsome? No, that's not what it was. Uh, so this one here was sent in to us. It says, according to a studio at Boston University... You could cut your risk, I'm sorry, a study from a studio. According to a study from Boston University, you could cut your risk of cold and flu by 30% if you have this for breakfast. What is it, Charlie? Bloody Mary. No. (laughs) Although I bet that does, too. Kill all those germs. Right up there. No, if you have peanut butter for breakfast. Really? Yeah, it cuts your chances of cold and flu by 30%. That's so good. I think you can put it on something, so maybe put it on pancakes or toast or whatnot, but by adding peanut butter to your breakfast routine... You do that often, don't you, Dad? Peanut butter on toast? I love peanut butter. Yeah. There you, so that's why you're so darn healthy. Still can't explain I, why you're so darn handsome. Specimen of health. <laughs> I, I think it has more to do with the peanut butter and Bloody Mary. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that for a good healthy breakfast. It's a <laughs> breakfast nice, of champions. well-rounded meal right there. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Good talking to you, as usual. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, let's say, you sure today ain't Monday? No, it feels like it, but it okay. is Tuesday. Well, then you know the good thing about that. The week will be shorter. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hold on. we got jump it, on it. It's Tuesday. It feels like Monday, so that means tomorrow's going to feel like Tuesday. We're going to be a day behind the whole darn week. There you got her. If you've got a question you'd like us to ask Charlie next week, send it to us. Send it to charlie at johnandheidyshow.com we'll talk to you next week charlie bye daddy okay. bye fluff bye john bye bye my father-in-law right there we talk to him every tuesday just because we can with a little show we like to call tuesdays, tuesdays with, with charlie. charlie this portion of the program is brought to you by carsforsale.com if you're in the market to buy a car truck or van find thousands of vehicles to choose from at carsforsale.com Today is a very special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It is Tuesday, the 8th day of September. Today is Another Look Unlimited Day. What does that mean? I have no clue what that means. I don't know either. It's also International, what does it say? Literacy. <laughs> International Literacy Day. There you go. Very cool. I Literacy sounded is it out. good. I spelled it out, Heidi. It's also Pardon Day, so pardon me. It's Pediatric Hematology Oncology Nurses Day. Whoa. 
That That's is specific. Very specific. So <laughs> if you happen to be so all three of you, a pediatric- you should get together. <laughs> if you happen to be a pediatric hematology oncology nurse, today is your day. <laughs> it's also Virgin Mary Day and World Physical Therapy Day. So yeah. get out there and celebrate one or all of those. You know which one I'm going to celebrate today? What is that? I'm going to celebrate Literacy Day. I'm going to read a, a good book. good thing to celebrate. I was just talking. I could read today. I was, at a, I was at a thing the other night where a Pastor Rick Warren, you've heard of the guy, he's got books out and stuff. He reads a book every single day. That's, he like reads a whole book every day. I, I, I don't have the time to I don't do either. That. I was like, man, that's awesome. But I, I don't know yeah, where I would him. do that. I kind of need to sleep somewhere. <laughs> so. All right. Today's a special day. Tuesday, the 8th day of September. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. We're going to talk about the perfect office. Here are seven objects that convey authority in the workplace, according to Mark Salem Mind Games. Okay. These are things you need in your office to be extremely perfect, like the best stuff to have in there. All right. If you want to convey authority, your diploma. Some think it's tacky. Others think it demonstrates pride and confidence. <laughs> I don't have one. We have a high school diploma. Should I put my high we school diploma? We should probably up? display our high school diplomas. <laughs> and our grade point average. <laughs> 2.8. <laughs> it's almost a perfect 1.0. But I, uh, well, that's not the right way. Another thing, you're supposed to have a family photo. It defines who you are. A dumbbell. Set it on the floor in full view. It says to your coworkers, I take my health seriously. <laughs> <laughs> dumb dumb. I have some dumb dumbs. Those are suckers that are in a drawer. Does that count? Uh, a map or a globe? I used to always have a map. I need to get my map back. I do. Map. Do I have a globe? I had a globe somewhere. Oh, Troy took I, your globe. Yeah, I know where that went. Uh, that demonstrates you're a big thinker. Well, I am. Uh, assigned anything, something signed, it conveys importance through association. Ah. So I think we should just sign something. Let's sign that lamp. <laughs> <laughs> A set of something, encyclopedias, rare books, whatever. It shows that you are focused and curious. And a ticking clock. It says, I'm important and busy. Do you remember when I... (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I know exactly what you're going to say. I wanted to get some clocks. uh, I put them above my map. This, I thought, was such a good idea. So you could have every time zone. I'd have every time zone. Yeah. But what I didn't realize is the clocks were ticking. (laughs) And, you know, we're in a business where, you know, we're recording stuff. And and, uh, we're on the air and all this. So this was in my studio. So I was trying to record commercials, and it was tick, 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 I was awful. so mad. He insisted on buying these things. I told I him, I don't want like you to buy months. them. They're- After six months, you finally got me clocks, and then I had you take them back the oh, very same day. Oh, so mad. <laughs> that didn't work out so hot. Six things that you should not have in your office are an ashtray. You don't want to have a tube TV that says that your ideas are probably outdated. That's Probably for for Mike and Furniture, says you're not important enough for wood. Candy colored computer, time to grow up and have, you know, regular colored computer. No cardboard boxes, looks like maybe you're planning on quitting. And anything orange, it suggests emotional instability. We have a ton of orange. <laughs> no, like all of this, we're emotionally unstable. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody would be surprised to, to find that out. All right. Well, there you go. Coming up, we're going to talk about a mayor that's going to outlaw dying in his community. We'll oh, see, that's nice. See how that goes. Coming up. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. A mayor of a town in France is telling people to quit dying. Not on my watch. (laughs) With open space at a premium... Their plans to build a new cemetery was thwarted. The mayor of a French town is encouraging townspeople to do something unique. Don't die. Gil Bernardi, mayor of Cortez de Azur, it's a resort of Les Lavadou. I'm sure I got none I'm, of that right. I'm sure. That sounded so... I, I, if I said it faster and <laughs> with a little more authority, maybe. Uh, he said uh, there's an order for people to no longer die within their bo- borough boundaries, and it applies to anyone who does not have a family cemetery vault. So if you don't have a place to bar- get buried, you can't die there legally. He has issued the decree because the town cemetery has run out of space, and the court ruled that they're not going to allow anyone to build a new cemetery in the nearby town. So they're how, saying, how, no way. Okay, well, what happens if you do? I mean, it's not like any of us have control. They're going to give you the control. death penalty. I don't know. I'm not sure what they're going to do. <laughs> but you can't die in that town in France. Huh. 
So people are dying to get in It'll there. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Or apparently they're dying to get out of there. Either way, it's illegal to die there. Huh. Coming your way here in a minute, we're going to talk about surveys. How accurate do you think they are? We're going to tell you in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. Quite often, we read the results of surveys and polls here on the radio program, and it's interesting because I've often wondered how accurate those things could be. If you've ever wondered how accurate you could, it could be, <laughs> or whatever I was trying to say, <laughs> uh, you might have guessed there was a poll taken to see if people oh, think that boy. surveys are accurate. In a survey of 1,000 Americans, 68% said they didn't think that a survey of 1,000 people could accurately reflect the views of all Americans. No, well, of course hmm. not. That's common sense if those 68 percent are right though that means that this survey is inaccurate too <laughs> so that's true hmm. here's the thing that i've done i've had people call me for surveys and i've just because i think it's ridiculous some of the surveys that i've been called about i've made things up i'm like you know what i'm gonna thwart their plans to have this and usually they'll get like two questions in they're like well that's all we need for uh you said it was gonna be 15 minutes no no we're all done we're, we're all good. done here Oh, sorry. Uh, disconnection. Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Coming up here in a bit, we're going to talk about preseason NFL rituals. If it includes joining a fantasy football league, we're going to chat all about that on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Now, for those of you who've listened to this program for, I don't know, even longer than a couple of minutes, you might know <laughs> that we're not huge sports fans. But we're going to talk about the office workers checking stats and all of the stuff for fantasy football leagues. Remember when we were in a fantasy football league? Yes, it was hilarious. <laughs> Everybody else was picking teams Our based teams on... Our teams suck. Yeah, we didn't do so hot. But they no. were all picking teams based on stats. And, you know, Heidi, they were looking through. She's like, this guy has a funny name. So it was the... <laughs> Your brother was so mad by the time that was done. <laughs> and then I, I had actually picked somebody that was doing really well, so I was actually doing pretty good, and that made him even more mad. <laughs> ben Rothelsberger. because I was like, yeah, that's a funny name, Rothelsberger. <laughs> that's anyway, a funny name. A recent report says office workers checking stats and making uh, trades in a fantasy football league are costing employers $1.1 billion yeah, I, a week Oh my god! in lost productivity. The, they found that uh, nearly 37 million people spend an average of 50 minutes a week at work managing their fantasy oh, football man. team. 50 minutes a week. As an employer, doesn't that just make you cringe? Mm -hmm. oh. Fantasy sports rank right up there with shopping on eBay and online poker as the biggest wasters of productivity in the workplace. Well, now shopping on eBay. No. That's different. You don't do that either. <laughs> Despite that, a leading consultant actually encourages employers to go ahead and let the employees play because he says that fantasy sports foster a sense of camaraderie in the workplace. The employment consulting firm Challenger, Gray and Christmas, estimates companies lose up to $435 million a week because wow. of workers being distracted by virtual teams. Wow. So, but there's still. What does that say about our society? Well, what it says is, uh, according to this survey, even though they're distracted, they're happier when they are working. So they're saying, just let them do it. Otherwise, they're going to be mad. They'll quit. They'll go somewhere else. They will let them play. They'll fantasy let them football. play fantasy football. No, they'll be right in the employee. Like uh, we also allow you to play fantasy football. <laughs> like, I'm going to work there. <laughs> so uh, they're saying, hey, if, if they're good employees all all the other time of the year, just let them have some fun. We don't have to play fantasy football because our whole darn life is a fantasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, coming up, we got some good news. That's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from, with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. I always search high and low to find something positive to end this program with, and here's what I found that I think is interesting. And it sounds not so positive, but listen here. If you think you had a rough day, at least it's not as bad as this 12-year-old boy. During a visit to an art exhibition in Taiwan, 
this 12 year old oh, tripped I heard about this and Oof. fell into a 1.5 oh, million dollar I heard painting about this. this is painful yeah. you're going john i thought it was positive news this no. is it gets good according to relevant magazine uh while he was trying to catch himself he ended up poking a oh. hole in a canvas of a 1.5 million dollar painting the whole unfortunate episode was, of course, captured on a security camera. Fortunately, though, the young art fan is not going to be held responsible for the accident. That was nice. That's that the is, good part. That is nice. According to the Focus Taiwan News Channel, the exhibition's organizers plan on requesting that an insurance company pay to have the painting restored. But they're well, saying we're, it's, it was an accident. You know there's insurance. Yeah. There would it would have be completely be. different if he purposely vandalized exactly. this. Exactly. But that's not what and happened. And since it was on camera, they were able to see. Yeah, they it were able to see that it was clearly an accident. So did you see this online already? I did. All right. Well, I, I have a link. For those of you who haven't seen it online, go check it out. I put a link on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. And if you go there, you'll see the link and it's got uh, the whole story. You can check it all out. So I just, I think that the, I wanted to use this as positive news, good news, because I'm so proud of that museum for doing the right thing yeah because they could have been real snooty about it and said that is your responsibility yeah but i'm glad that they used a little common sense and realized it was a mistake well, and they probably accident. figured they have a better chance of getting the 1.5 yeah. million dollars out of the insurance company than they do out of a four-year-old oh he's 12 <laughs> this 12 year old probably doesn't have that good yeah. of a paper route whatever paper route might do well but 1.5 million probably not yeah. <laughs> all right time to say goodbye heidi goodbye heidi goodbye everybody have a great day thanks for tuning in to the john and heidi show Time now for the bonus break, only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. And your bonus break is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. You can save time, you can save money, and you can shave like a pro if you order your razors from the Dollar Shave Club. And there's an official name for the one we use. I always call it the middle one. It's, it's, it's not. <laughs> the middle It's one. not the middle one. It's called the 4X. You know how I know that? How do you know? I got an email from Dollar Shave Club saying it's called the 4X, John. Uh, what they actually emailed me to let me know is that they're shipping a, another package of razors to me. And it's perfect timing because I'm using the last one right now. Oh. It's like they read my mind. <laughs> and I've got a bonus coming as well. I got some repair serum because they sent me a little survey to fill out and it asked a bunch of questions. And they said, hey, you know what? We're going to send you some repair serum absolutely free because they like doing free little bonuses. That is That's super. why. They're the sponsor of the bonus break. Always get this little extra here. So if you'd like to know more, check them out right now. For 3 bucks a month, you can get razors delivered to your door. For 6 bucks a month, get the 4X razors. Or go executive for just $9 a month, delivered to your door every single month. Or you can click on her. I want them every other month. That's completely up to you. You're in charge. But sign up now at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Portly Swedish police officers have a new reason to work out, Heidi. Okay. There's a security entrance at the National Police Headquarters, and it won't let them in if they weigh too much. What? Yeah. A construction error in a recently remodeled security entrance has built-in scale design to only let one person at a time pass through the door. What? Because, well, they have it set up where you're doing like a thumbprint scan or whatever. Yeah. So they don't want to have it where like somebody holds you hostage and they use your thumbprint okay. to get in with you. So it only lets one person at a time, but it's caused some embarrassing moments for police officers who are <clears throat> a little bigger. <laughs> they maybe haven't spent enough time exercising. Anybody that weighs over 230 pounds, oh, when they man. do this, they go up, they try to pass through, and they're greeted by a recorded voice saying, excuse me, stop, one at a time, one please. <laughs> that is so and embarrassing. They not let through. So <laughs> I could not make it through this doorway. I'm just saying, because uh, 230 One at pounds. A time, please. You know what? I would like to personally oh, that admit that if I went funny. on a diet and I lost uh, the weight that I want to lose, my end goal would be 230 pounds. Well, you would look weird. I've I've seen you lose we, quite was, a bit of weight, and, remember and that? when you get down even to that weight, you look weird. We, a, we, you've you've got a very big frame. I, and when we lost, you and I did this diet a while back, and I lost a bunch of weight. I got down to what was my goal? My goal was 240, and I surpassed it. I was down to 235. Yeah, and you looked – I thought you looked sick. I didn't I look you looked sick. Ill. I looked good. I was buff. I was flexing <laughs> the muscles in the mirror every day. I had to gain weight back so I could actually get work done. I was like, I got to quit staring at myself. I mean, look how good I look. <laughs> I Everywhere so I go, good women were handing me phone numbers. I'm like, come on, please don't. I'm married. I'm, I'm, married. I'm married. I can't do this. I'm like, I got to gain the weight back because if I don't, it's going to cause problems in our marriage. <laughs> 
Okay, none of that is true, other than the fact that I am married, and very happily married, I might add. Well, but uh, it is it is so funny that they have that entrance. I'm sure hoping that we don't have one of those in the building that we're going to. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be bad. One at a time. And one at a time, please. <laughs> yeah, it's just me. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's take a look here at some other fun stuff from the Dollar Shave Club. They send this thing out. Uh, it's called the Bathroom Minutes. And I was reading out of this every week for a while, and I kind of forgot to do it. Uh, let's talk about dogs for a minute. Uh, it says here... Uh, 40,000 years ago, domesticated dogs gave Cro-Magnon men, also known as early man, the leg up in the evolutionary competition, which is less resourceful than Neanderthals. Their well-timed barks foiled in pending Neanderthal attacks, basically making them the earliest known sentries. So according to them, they're saying that's why uh, humans are around, because of dogs. Ah. So thank you, dogs. Next time you I go love camping, dogs. I really love dogs. Two more things about dogs. Next time you go camping, don't take a compass. Bring your dog, and plenty of kibble. According to the Journal of Zoology, a dog's sensitivity to small changes in polarity make them poop with their bodies aligned along the north-south axis of the Earth's magnetic field. I'm going to pay attention next time our dogs go out back. So if you ever get lost, <laughs> don't panic. Feed the dog and see which way they poop. <laughs> Whatever. And they'll poop facing north and south. That's what they say. That sounds like a bunch of bunk to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. And in Basenji, a breed of dog from Africa can't bark. Instead, they come out sounding more like a yodel, known as a baru, that uh, th- thanks to their shallower vocal box and other dogs, because they don't bark, it makes them very, very soft, a keen sense of smell. Usually good eyesight, and it's made them excellent lion hunters. So they oh. can't bark. They yodel instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure really? what it sounds like. <laughs> Is that what that sounds like? <laughs> Probably not. All right. There you go. A little info from the uh, bathroom minutes from the Dollar Shave Club. You can get your own delivered to your door, and they'll bring razors with it, too. Actually, yes, they you're, will. You're, you're buying the razors. This thing is free. It's your little bonus. That's why they sponsor our bonus break. You can learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.